We're here at the studio today, ITU studio today, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Clint McClellan, who's the board president and chairman of the uh, Continua Health Alliance. Welcome, Clint. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about Continua Health Alliance and uh, its participation in ITU's uh, e-health work. Great. Yeah, so we just started working with the ITU about nine months ago. It's a great collaboration, great partnership. Continua is developing end-to-end -end specifications and standards for e-health systems. Everything from the sensor, the blood pressure cuff, for example, to the mobile phone, to the electronic health record system. And through the ITU, we can reach hundreds of health ministers, of telecom ministers, that we can get feedback from, but they can also adopt these systems and, and get scalable e-health systems, which has not been possible to date. I in your press material, uh, you talk about end-to-end -end, uh, plug-and-play connectivity. Just how important is that interoperability in, uh, in e-health and m-health? You have to make investments in your hubs, your phones, or your standalone hubs. The sensors on the other side, you need to have plug-and-play sensors so that when you invest in that hub, you can bring a new vendor in and you don't get mm -hmm. locked in. So if you like blood pressure cuff A and you want blood pressure cuff B in two years, you're protected. But then on the back end, you want it to go into standardized health record systems so that you can have those health records for the life of that patient. The whole idea now is population health, and it's, it's, it's managing that patient for the, for the lifetime of that patient. That's what a lot of the national governments are looking at. And some of their major concern is the health record side. Mm -hmm. And the devices are a great cherry on top, if you will, or that's a great addition, is to have that interoperability. In other cases, many, many parties look at the device interoperability as the most important part because they don't want to get locked into a vendor. So the great thing is Continua has all of that in that one-stop shop with uh, IHE-based records, uh, HL7 standards, Bluetooth, uh, mm -hmm. 3G, 4G, and we've developed guidelines to be able to build those systems. That's, that's really what the heart of Continua is. So there's a really broad spectrum of, uh, of standardization work that you, you can consider. Um, are there particular health communities that can benefit from, from, from this standardization, this uh, interoperability? Uh, yeah, most of the health system really can. And because of this standardization, uh, we will see markets grow faster than we had ever thought would grow. Mm -hmm. For example, in Japan, they're looking at wellness services. So they're using standard phones with blood pressure cuffs, weight scales, and uh, pedometers with about $5 per month services. So it's a fairly inexpensive service, but the mobile operator, NTT Docomo, can mm -hmm. has a, big, a large choice between different vendors. So you can get the prices low. Uh, in Denmark and in the UK, they're looking at chronic disease systems so that they can outfit patients very quickly and effectively with blood pressure cuffs, weight scales, and then have standardized health record systems. So between the chronic disease and the preventive w medicine, which is what the world is looking at, the same devices can be used in both systems. And that's the beautiful part about Continua, is that with that interoperability, both, both countries, all three countries gain mm -hmm. from using the same standard. Uh -huh. It explains the motivation for international standardization. Exactly. You, 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 you mentioned the, the, the guidelines, which of course you've submitted for review to the, the relevant ITU T study group. Yes. That's the ITU uh, sector that's dealing with standardization. Perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your motivation for, for, for doing that and what you hope to accomplish by, by doing that. Well, Continua has been very good at developing those end-to-end -end specifications. Uh, the Bluetooth the interface to the, f to the sensor, to the phone, and the IHE, HL7 co connectivity. But we're not broad enough to reach many of these health ministries and telecom ministries. And in addition, just the standardization uh, uh, skills that the ITU have, they are taking the, our 400 pages of guidelines, cleaning them up, and actually making them even more efficient and effective. So that's been fantastic. The ITU has been a great partner from that perspective. So we really hope that together we can, we can proliferate health systems throughout the world between the ITU's reach with telecom ministers, health ministers, and our expertise in putting basically the communications standards mm -hmm. in amongst these health mm -hmm. standards. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. And, and, and just one final question. I, uh, I know that you're on your way to, to, to Brussels uh, to join the launch of a very exciting project, so perhaps you could just briefly explain a little bit about that. Absolutely. They have a 12-day bike ride from Brussels to Barcelona, and they will be monitoring type 1 diabetics 
stationary while they're at rest and then while they're on the bike. And so we're going to get some remarkable research and feedback on how this event would affect uh, a type 1 diabetic and even some other non-diabetics would be monitored also. So this is really some cutting edge research to get real time data. And actually you'll be able to watch it, watch it live as well. And so what will happen is they'll get the feedback as well as they're on these, on these uh, bicycles making their way through. So it's a really a cutting edge project. Well, thanks very much for joining us here today, Clint. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.